Morning, everybody. James, I'd like to invite you to start, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm just watching the, the increasing number of participants joining the meeting. So I was giving everybody a, 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 an opportunity to, uh, to join us, but welcome uh, to you all. Uh, my name is, uh, is James Garden. I'm chairman of Edinburgh World Heritage, uh, which is an independent charity that aims to ensure this city's, Edinburgh City's uh, world heritage uh, status and to make sure it benefits everyone. Uh, we, like uh, many of our partners, uh, want to connect people to their heritage and everything we do through the conservation of historic buildings, uh, delivering improvements to public spaces or engaging uh, people directly through education. Uh, I'd say that my fellow trustees and, and team are somewhat sad that we're not able to host the group uh, in the city of Edinburgh, uh, but this uh, next two day uh, conference uh, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, can't be held uh, in, on site uh, due to the present COVID pandemic and its associated uh, restrictions. Uh, however, we're delighted to host the group virtually for this uh, sixth international meeting of the Atlas World Heritage Project. We'll be connecting friends and colleagues from all over uh, Europe with the work uh, that Edinburgh World Heritage and our partners have been undertaking. Uh, I think it promises to be an exciting two days. I'm looking forward to it since this meeting is really a culmination of uh, several years of collaboration. And I look forward to hearing more of the shared experience and addressing the common problems by each uh, partner uh, city. Um, such work can't be undertaken in isolation, either at home or internationally, and in Edinburgh we are uh, therefore fortunate uh, to have representing our city as partners, uh, Councillor Adam McVeigh. Uh, Adam is leader of the City of Edinburgh Council, he's been a great force for good uh, in the city, uh, and uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm delighted that he has been able to uh, spare uh, his uh, time during what uh, obviously is a very busy and demanding uh, time for us. And I'm grateful to Adam for, uh, for welcoming, uh, welcoming uh, everyone uh, virtually to, uh, to Edinburgh and to set the scene for the, for the coming day's events. Uh, so welcome, Adam, uh, and I'll now hand over to, to you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the, the invitation to come along and, and welcome everybody. Um, albeit virtually, I absolutely share your frustration that we're not able to host everyone in Edinburgh, and I'm sure everyone who's uh, not in Edinburgh right now is kicking themselves at the missed opportunity of visiting our fantastic city um, yet again. Um, as, as was just said, I'm leader of the the, uh, the council have been for the last four years, and I think it'd be also appropriate to say, considering some of the subject matters that we're going to speak about um, today and, and in the future, I'm also vice chair of the city's climate commission. And um, we've put three uh, things that are the absolute heart of our policy making: the well-being of our citizens and trying to drive that forward in a city with huge participation in the arts, culture. Um, and and uh, as the greenest city actually in the UK as well. Um, carbon reduction and hitting that sustainability target. And by 2030, we're aiming to be a net zero city, a hugely challenging uh, ambition and one that we are keen to deliver on. And a reduction in poverty. This city is a hugely wealthy city with a huge amount of inequity. And the World Heritage Site being the city centre, being the centre of... Uh, commerce, the centre of so much of the culture of our city, is interlinked uh, hugely and central to those three central agendas that we have. Um, so it's a pleasure to, to be here, pleasure to uh, participate even in a small way to uh, the Atlas World Heritage Project. It's only by working together that we can uh, achieve our goals. The Edinburgh Council, Historic Environment Scotland, Edinburgh World Heritage are long-term partners in the management of our World Heritage sites. And here in Edinburgh, each of us brings our own expertise, our own perspective to how that can be done, dealing with the complexity, the dynamicity of, of a city like Edinburgh with a hugely successful and vibrant economy and the absolute beauty of Edinburgh that makes it an absolute privilege to call it home, Edinburgh is one of those cities that on your walk to work, it will, uh, you will come across a vista when you raise your eyes and it will punch you metaphorically um, in the gut and make you stop and look. Together, 
we have a duty of care to the history of our city, but also uh, the present and the future of what it is to people here and what it can be for people going forwards. And that, that is enshrined in our commitment uh, in the UNESCO World Heritage Site to protect um, our World Heritage Sites for those future generations. Our World Heritage Site, <clears throat> Edinburgh World Heritage has participated in the Dallas World Project since its inception and made an important and long-lasting relationships between partners in Porto and Florence, Bordeaux, and uh, Santiago de Compostela. And I'd like to extend a special welcome to representatives from our partners on the call um, today. So the, the project has been working on developing sustainable management plans for each World Heritage Site by addressing common problems faced by each partner city. And we're taking, uh, we're talking about things like gentrification, tourism impacts, which are common across uh, the areas and the climate emergency. Um, and all of these things, again, go back to those three underpinning policy agendas that we have as a city. So uh, these are inextricably linked with, um, with our agenda as a capital city. In Edinburgh, we talk a lot about mainstreaming heritage, making it accessible for everybody, making it relevant to everybody, breaking down the barriers between heritage and sustainability to ensure we have a practical way forwards uh, in the shared challenges that we have right across the city and right now we're exploring this um, as a partnership through the World Heritage Site Management Plan um, and its review and developing and implementing the management plan for the sites in this way in which uh, we can um, protect one of the city's most beautiful uh, historic sites. The City of Edinburgh Council has been instrumental in this push and bringing that uh, expertise and drawing projects closer together uh, learning from the Atlas is brought into the management plan, the next iteration of the management plan um, in Edinburgh, a lot of learning. And alongside this, the barriers between heritage, sustainability are further broken um, down. And Edinburgh World Heritage Groundbreaking Climate Emergency Programme, which you'll be hearing about over the next two days, is a, a really central part of that. And it's the climate emergency that I think we'll be focusing on for the next two days and quite um, aptly so. It's vitally important that we continue to break down those barriers between how we talk about and how we manage our historic environment and, and our heritage and our built heritage. And when we're talking about the climate emergency, it's important that uh, that remains part of that conversation, not only because that is the best way to protect our heritage, but that is the only way we're gonna achieve that goal of really meaningfully tackling uh, the issue. Um, I think we can do this by understanding what the threat is that we're facing and also uh, working to create solutions which enhance, protect and celebrate our tangible and intangible heritage right across our communities. And um, while we're plagued by buzzwords in the city management sector, uh, acting um, sustainably is not simply flavour of the week. It's going to be a bigger and bigger part of how all of us manage our cities over the next 10 years because all of us have similar um, world leading as we're all trying to be uh, carbon emissions targets. The World Atlas project has benefited the City of Edinburgh and the Council greatly, shared a lot of the latest in sustainable heritage management research, providing frameworks and forums for discussion, how we can share um, intelligence, share solutions to the problems that we're all grappling with. And the City of Edinburgh Council actively engages in these uh, final push of this project and um, preparing and developing the next World Heritage Site Management Plan on the back of the expertise afforded by the project and that shared knowledge is going to be a, a central point. It has allowed Edinburgh World Heritage to engage widely with local schools through craft projects, <clears throat> creatively asking some really difficult questions for grown-ups to tackle um, and what is our heritage and how we can look after it for the future and for the grow-ups, the project has also engaged with professionals in the council and the heritage sector beyond by providing a brand new online CPD management heritage and a changing world experience. And anyone walking around Edinburgh will be struck by two things, I think, when you're in one of the most historic places in the world. One is the utter amazing beauty of the architecture and the landscape and that vista that you're confronted with in all directions. 
And two are some of the things that have crept in in the last few decades. It's a very car dominated environment. And obviously we're working to try and change that. And I know that's um, connected with a lot of our plans right across the, right across the city, right across the world, sorry. Um, importantly, I think the Atlas World Heritage Project has reminded us what to be proud of about our world heritage. We're living in a breathtaking um, piece of outstanding universal value. It's an enormous importance to us as individual cities and to our citizens, but also in huge importance to the world as well. But we're not a museum. We need to live in our city. As I say, Edinburgh City Centre is the centre of our economy in so many ways. We still have um, cycleways that we need to build and rubbish bins that need to be empty, just the same as anyone else. And that challenge becomes sometimes quite conflicted when you're talking about a city like Edinburgh, where still so many people live within that city centre. Um, and thankfully, actually one of the um, one of the positives to be taken from the, the horrendous COVID uh, virus that we've lived through the last year is that more of those properties which were taken by tourism and short-term lets are moving back into residential use to keep our city centre alive, uh, a live place. This week, we all celebrate World Heritage sites for how they're actively used for locals and visitors alike and how people come together to maintain their buildings and invest in the historic environment. And we look uh, also at the case studies in our partners, uh, our partner cities, to help celebrate uh, the week of World Heritage Sites. And Thursday um, is World Heritage Day. Edinburgh World Heritage is hosting an event with Lloyd Grossman, um, it's who's, uh, who's George and Townhouse, uh, who lives in a George and Townhouse like this, which isn't what it's called, but I think that's what it should have been called. So a missed opportunity. But um, anyway, so Lloyd's going to give an online lecture of the huge dilemma. Uh, making and breaking world cities and drawing on examples from Paris, and London, and Venice and Lloyd. Uh, we'll look at the challenges facing uh, the city and how we look to rebuild post COVID and explore how we can learn from the past. And I should say there are still tickets available for anybody interested. So today, um, looking ahead at the implementation of learning from the project and how we care for our city's world heritage sites in a sustainable way, how we drive that carbon agenda in the enormously fantastic challenge that we have of maintaining our world heritage status and sites. Um, and I'm really interested to hear how other partners have, have fared with their sustainable management plans and what their approach is uh, and hearing about that in a moment. So I wish everybody the best of luck with implementing your own uh, management plans and hope we can very much continue that shared learning between our cities going forward to make sure we all have a better chance of achieving our aims. So thank you so much to the organisers for inviting me along. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say a few words today. Um, and I wish you all the best with your uh, meeting today and going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. So what we're going to do now is go around our partners in the Atlas project. Uh, we're going to start off with Bordeaux. So I'll invite our representatives from Bordeaux to present their work on the sustainable management plan. Gabby, can you share the screen? Um, good morning, everybody. I am Anne-Laure uh, Monio. I am a site manager of uh, Bordeaux World Research Site. Um, we are uh, within the department. Ah, I'm sorry. Can you see me now? Because I can't, I can't see me myself on the video, so I don't know if you can see me well. Yeah. Ah, okay, thank you very much. So I start again. So I was saying I'm Anne-Laure Monio. I'm a site manager of Bordeaux Port of the Moon, and I'm going to share the presentation with Manon. Manon, I don't know if you can Hello. see Manon. <laughs> we are both in the same uh, uh, office. I will explain the management plan as uh, it is uh, 
it has been done. The process, can we uh, pass this uh, next? Yeah, please. Well, um, first, oh, this is not a, the, well, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the summary. Okay, the summary is very uh, uh, classical summary. First, we are going to describe the property, uh, inscribing the world is the list. Then we, we are going to talk about the project because there is no management without a, a development project for the site, uh, the government system, the evaluation, because it's uh, more than 10 years that the, the world site has been inscribed and uh, a lot has occurred since then. And then the action plan and and, um, uh, and 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 this is it. So next slide, please. Well, um, Bordeaux, a port of the moon, is uh, a city uh, developed on the uh, meander of the river Garonne on the left bank because the right bank was a uh, long time uh, submitted to flooding. In the 19th century, the first bridge uh, has allowed the right bank to uh, develop. Um, it lays down at 100 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean. It has uh, today 240,000 inhabitants and it's uh, located uh, in the center of an agglomeration of 1,750,000 7, inhabitants. Um, it has gained its prosperity for the arbor that brought um, the possibility of commercial and intellectual exchanges and the urban um, perspective and ensemble uh, are reflecting this prosperity. The port activities are then gradually declined and a major urban project carried out from the, um, the late uh, 19th in the 20th century has made, made it possible to uh, inscribe the site on the World Heritage List. So in the case of Bordeaux, Port of the Moon, the urban transformation has been the way to um, enhance the site and inscribe and manage the beauty that was already there, but wasn't see, wasn't uh, seen through the uh, urban decline. Um, next slide, please. Well, in 2007, uh, we can have uh, uh, these little uh, uh, festivities to celebrate the inscription on the World Heritage List. The site is a very big urban site, including the River Garonne, the former docks in, on, the, on the north, um, and all the urban sprawl within the um, 19th century boulevard. Um, since then, the lot has been done. The stone city has been protected. Uh, the historic center has, has seen its urban regulation change. Um, uh, a social um, housing in the Grand Park of the 20th century has been um, uh, uh, as, uh, as has been uh, rehabilitated uh, the, the place. Uh, in the city center, housing, public spaces, and facilities have been re rehabilitated to the um, district of the docks uh, have uh, permitted to pursue the urban continuity between the city, the south city of the Chartron and the north city of Bacalan. Uh, the Chabon d'Elmas bridge has been built and uh, it's allowed today to have a walk around the river Garonne. Now the urban strategy of the management plan has to be extended to the metropolitan scale. Next slide, please. It's inspired by the 
the recommendation about historic urban landscape. This recommendation consider urban change as uh, necessary. The thing is to find the DNA of the transformation. I like to uh, remember at the, at the opportunity of the 40th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention, Mention, Irina Bokova saying that there is no choice uh, to make between developing and protecting because a true protection is which make uh, an urban site to keep alive and kicking. Um, next slide, please. Well, our strategy are defined in and around the World Heritage Site. It is necessary to broaden our view because some strategy like mobility or um, uh, water management uh, have impact on the historic center, but are uh, pertinent at another uh, large uh, scale. Uh, now, the strategy are made to maintain development objectives and face climate change. I am going to um, pass the uh, floor to give the floor to Manon. Here Thank you are, you. Manon. Thank you, Anna. Uh, can you change the slide, please? So the, the past 10 years have been an opportunity for learning. Uh, we can retain simple principles that, uh, that have inspired us for the future. Heritage is what is available. It's not only old buildings, it's also natural spaces, wetlands, uh, it's, which is always there. And because we give it a value, it can constitute a project opportunity. This is the meaning of inventive conservation as defined by Donadieu. Knowing is fundamental, but it's not enough to know objectively. It's also necessary to know the territory as it's it is perceived by those who inhabit it and those who contribute to its dynamics. This is why in Bordeaux, archaeogeography and anthropology complement the participation of experts. Uh, next slide, please. Series of workshops for the co-construction of Bordeaux Port of the Moon management plan have been initiated in March 2020 as as part of the Atlas WH project with the services of Bordeaux Metropole and the city of Bordeaux. This co-construction is an opportunity to deepen reflection on what those heritage really implies. In this context, a diagram, the, you can see it on the, the screen, uh, has been designed in an educational way to affirm heritage as the outcome of processes of transmission referring to different issues and topics. It asserts heritage as capital for sustainable development. It is a process which is which in the interpretation, preservation, enhancement, or adaptation of what already exists com comes into play. Next slide, please. You, you can see some, some maps. The, the first one gives a representation as objective as land use can, maps can produce. It reveals what is missing, the gap between what we want and what we have, and which is the reason for projects. The other data gives us a representation of what is perceived within the real, at least by some people. It reveals a lack of knowledge, which is another reason for other type of projects. Next slide. The co-construction of the management plan made it possible to bring out some strategic objectives. The first one is protection of outstanding universal value. This one refers to rules that allow transmission and include possible mutation. The second one is adaptation to current needs. It means transforming the city through natural and cultural resources and without compromising them. Then we have knowledge and in, in, in interpretation. This one refers to the development of the identification of the tangible and intangible elements that make up the outstanding universal value by admitting the relativity of perceptions. The, another one is appropriation and involvement. This one means the recognition of the urban values by all with the objective of development in line with resources. The last one is hospitality and opening. It refers to an adapted welcome in order to make social and cultural interaction possible in all the dim dimensions. Can you change the slide, please? 
Thank you. Uh, between September 14 and 20, Bordeaux Metropole has organized the week of World Heritage Sites, which has included heritage-related meetings, exhibitions, and events. This week has been designed by Edinburgh World Heritage as an, as an action of the Atlas WH project. It aims to disseminate and promote the transnational identity of the project's five World Heritage properties. In memory of the Port of the Moon, which has a allowed Bordeaux to develop exchanges with the world, a mysterious container has launched on the Place de la Bourse. You can see it on the, on the picture. Can you change the slide? Inside this container, um, one could discover the cloud made uh, of postcards drawn by Bordeaux students. Um, the students imagine they, they, their heritage in the form of calligrams. A giant magnetic map of the, of the most liked heritage places took place on the wall, and these emblematic places have been selected by more than 60 associations for the safeguard of heritage. Um, it, uh, they, they have been transformed into playing cards also. Can you change the uh, slide, please? The Atlas of the five UNESCO sites of the Atlas World Heritage Project, which was made by the Urban Agency of Bordeaux, was set off to be consulted. At least, at last but not least, the collective exhibition of the five Atlas WH partners told the public about the different challenges of managing urban heritage sites that we, we can see today. Um, thank you for your attention, and I, I hope this presentation gave you a, a good overview of uh, Bordeaux, Port of the Moon, and, and our management system. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne and Manon. That was really, really interesting. I'm going to pass on now to Christina, who's going to tell us a bit more about Edinburgh's uh, management plan. Good morning, everyone. Um, just give me a moment while I set up my screen share, but a very good morning to you all. Can I just get a quick confirmation <clears throat> that people can see this all right? All good, Christina. Perfect. Thank you, Gabby. <clears throat> well, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, a very warm hello to all of our um, Atlas World Heritage uh, Programme partners and, of course, the many others who are joining us digitally this morning. A quick hello from those who don't know me. Uh, my name is Christina Sinclair and I am the Director at Edinburgh World Heritage. I'm absolutely delighted that we're all here to share international barrier breaking work and to share that with the wider audience. So today I uh, will be updating the progress we've been making in Edinburgh on the development of our sustainable uh, management plan, our World Heritage Site Management Plan. So first of all, uh, just a quick uh, reminder on time skills for delivery, as this is just quite helpful in putting these updates into context. As our Atlas partners already know, Edinburgh has a slightly different delivery timeline than that of our partners. This is basically due to the fact that our current World Heritage Site Management Plan is actually up for renewal in 2022 and is still live. So we have slightly pushed forward and agreed to push forward our programme so that it ties in with that um, quite efficiently. Uh, this means that we're in a relatively um, early stage of the process of review. Um, but I will be giving you an update on where we are with that this morning. So um, I will give you the update on uh, progress at this relatively early stage in the process. Um, I'll give you a quick reminder of some of the interesting context that we're working in in Edinburgh, um, how the Atlas work and our wider work is feeding into that programme. And uh, I think the meat of the updates as far as the partners are concerned uh, will be in the updated themes and priorities, which we're drawing down uh, from these really interesting sources. So um, another quick reminder um, for our international partners um, in that ourselves at Edinburgh World Heritage and how we fit into the partnership of organizations that support um, the heritage management of the city. Um, in his excellent introduction, Adam McVeigh um, of the City of Edinburgh Council noted that it's only by working together uh, that we can really break barriers and have impact. And this is something at Edinburgh World Heritage that we wholeheartedly agree with. Now, in this city, 
there are, as far as the management plan is concerned, and, and also quite generally, three really important partners in the management of the historic city. And that is the City of Edinburgh Council, Historic Environment Scotland, and Edinburgh World Heritage. Of course, there are many other excellent stakeholders, um, but for the management plan, those are very much the core. So unlike a number of the other cities taking part um, in the Atlas programme, we at Edinburgh World Heritage are not a resource team based within the local government, but an independent charity. Our mission and vision is to connect people to their shared heritage and to try to make sure that's a dynamic force that benefits everyone. We do this through a wide range of work from uh, funding and supporting vital conservation, uh, restoration and repair projects throughout the city on a rolling basis, engaging underrepresented communities with their heritage, trying to make sure that's an inclusive uh, process as possible. And as you'll be hearing plenty about over the next two days, uh, providing solutions to key issues such as the climate emergency. So that's us. Um, the City of Edinburgh Council, of course, is a local governing body for the city and Historic Environment Scotland is, of course, the national body for heritage in Scotland. Uh, so we are a relatively, uh, we are external from these organisations and we're a relatively small charity um, engaging with these larger governing bodies. This absolutely has its benefits as a system, um, but does give an added layer of complexity. A uh, particularly big challenge for us as a charity engaging with these large and complex um, organisations is to, particularly for the City of Edinburgh Council, uh, support them in the challenge that they have in mainstreaming heritage. Um, and by this, I mean ensuring that heritage is considered as an integrated part of the process from the early stages of any city management decision. This can be a real challenge for everyone involved. Um, and it's in an area where we uh, put quite a lot of time and effort. And of course, this has not been helped uh, by coronavirus, which has affected the city on many levels, from uh, tourism to business income uh, for the city council. This adds a layer of difficulty in Edinburgh, as I am sure it does for all of the cities around this virtual table. So uh, important context setting um, that I thought would be helpful. So our focus um, at Edinburgh World Heritage is around uh, breaking barriers, finding solutions and mainstreaming heritage. And of course, this is very much aligned with the aims of the Atlas programme. And so, um, as I mentioned in the last partnership meeting, when we talk about the work that is feeding into our uh, sustainability plan review, we are talking about the Atlas program and our wider work of mainstreaming heritage. The two together create our historic city management program. This takes the ideals and learnings of the Atlas project forward into the future to ensure this applies really well to Edinburgh's unique context. These partners, um, Sorry, these slides our partners have seen before, and uh, don't worry, I won't go through all of these very exciting looking bullet points in any detail. Um, but just to note the and kind of summarize the, <clears throat> the extent of work um, and the range of work that's really going into making sure that this process is robust as possible. Uh, you'll see there are a couple which are underlined uh, there. These are ones which are particularly important to the process. So what I will do is I'll just talk through each of them very, very quickly. Uh, and then give you a sense of uh, what are the key emerging themes that are informing our plan uh, review. Um, and this image just provides um, a, a summary of that. You can see the inputs, uh, which I'll be talking through briefly along the top. Um, of course, all of this is underpinned very importantly by engaging local communities. And that um, those are the key sources that will feed into um, what our new management plan, our new sustainability plan will achieve. So let's start very importantly uh, with the ATLAS methodology. Uh, as mentioned in the last partnership meeting, uh, we undertook an internal workshop to really um, review and consider the important conclusions that came out of this and really draw them down and apply them uh, to the Edinburgh context. Uh, this identified a number of uh, really important considerations for the new plan as it applies locally, uh, to name just a few, uh, a refocusing 
on the impact of uh, the lives of the city's people and the livability of the city. So that people-centered approach. The importance of our participatory um, and accountable management systems and active community uh, participation. Uh, and it's been very interesting to us um, already in the presentation uh, from Bordeaux this morning, uh, but also in previous partnership meetings, uh, how much uh, these areas of emphasis are really shared across international boundaries. So also feeding into the management plan review is our critical analysis of our existing um, World Heritage Site Management Plan. We again held a series of internal workshops to analyze essentially what has worked well, uh, what has not worked well, and how we can improve uh, the impact of this document uh, make sure it doesn't sit on a dusty shelf, make sure that it is active and used and helpful to the city partners and to the people uh, moving forward. So again, I just give you a sense of some of the conclusions and I will draw these together at the end. Uh, we looked at potentially tightening the number of actions. Um, we have 39 in the current management plan. So there's the, the sense that uh, having these uh, more focused and reduced would help to focus effort. Uh, using the process of the management plan review itself, so taking place this year and into next year, uh, to really strengthen the existing partnerships that we have, particularly with the City of Edinburgh Council and Historic Environment Scotland, but also more widely, uh, to create a shared vision and to really get the commitments in place to move um, those excellent ideas into action. And lastly, uh, to enhance outcomes again by having more accountability just making clear who is responsible for which action um, and to ensure that we can uh, you know, monitor whether or not and, and really hold ourselves accountable as to whether or not those actions are being achieved. Another key input is the Historic City Management Report. Um, as uh, everyone's getting a sense of from the, the introduction and, and from the talk this morning and I'm sure from, from past meetings, um, the, the management plan review and, and the management of the city and its heritage is very much a partnership effort. Um, no one body um, can, can achieve everything. We must work together uh, to really achieve practical impact. And so the, the management plan review, it's always been um, a partnership effort, um, principally with the City of Edinburgh Council. You can see Adam, who gave us our lovely introduction a moment ago on the right there uh, with my predecessor. And uh, the woman in the middle was the uh, Director of Conservation at Historic Environment Scotland. So key representatives um, of the city partnership at celebrating the last uh, World Heritage Site Management Plan um, adoption. So in order to really uh, strengthen this partnership and, and work well together, we are in the process now of putting together a historic city management report. Uh, this identifies key barriers to better historic city management looks at clear solutions and advises on a series of initiatives to take this forward. And of course, this draws heavily from the learnings and research and expertise that we've gained through the Atlas project. So again, the findings of this will feed into how we develop our next management plan review. And the final uh, key piece of work that I will just uh, mention to you that is particularly important in feeding into the review is our climate change risk assessment. You will be hearing more about this um, over the course of particularly today. Um, so I won't talk too much on this one, but very broadly, its purpose is to understand and to find the challenges to Edinburgh's World Heritage Site posed by climate change. Uh, and our partners on this project are City of Edinburgh Council, Historic Environment Scotland, Sniffer, uh, Edinburgh Centre for Carbon Innovation, University of Edinburgh and Edinburgh DAT. So again, a very collaborative piece. Uh, and a key characteristic of this is how it is based on robust community engagement, including those who are currently um, underrepresented in normal um, standard forms of consultation. This will influence the management plan in a number of ways in terms of a bespoke strategy uh, for the threat uh, of the climate emergency to Edinburgh's heritage, but also helping us to understand and develop the people centred an inclusive approach mentioned earlier in this presentation. So to draw that all together uh, a little bit, um, 
I've touched on some important conclusions uh, from individual pieces of work, but really wanted to uh, draw these together into some very broad themes to give you a sense of our forward momentum and direction. Uh, for the purposes of this short 15 minute update, I have put these into quite big groups, um, uh, but I'd really focus it on to three main areas. So really what we want to get out of the review of the management plan as a process and as a final product um, is to drive actions forward by ensuring they are focused, measurable, countable, and deliverable by the city partners. Secondly, to use the process of the review itself to support the mainstreaming um, of heritage and break barriers between subject areas. And lastly, to improve the participatory and inclusive engagement element, moving towards a more people-centered approach. Now, all of this I'm aware sounds uh, very overarching and it's slightly reflective of where we are um, at a relatively early part in the process, but it's really important to establish what we all want as partners out of this and what we are learning um, from ATLAS. Um, and these are all linked to key developing initiatives are informing everything from the scope uh, to the process of developing uh, the management plan review, to specific actions that we want to take, to how we engage with partners, how we engage with people of the city and the future governance of the site and how we monitor success. So there's a huge value in the whole process of which Atlas has been an absolutely key part of. Um, and of course, this is a very ambitious approach, um, but one that we feel um, is extremely important um, despite the challenges that we're all currently operating in not just to secure the social, environmental and economic benefits that Heritage already brings to Edinburgh and its people, but to best mobilise these to support its recovery from the pandemic. And I'm very pleased to say uh, that we have already secured funding to help make a key part of these ambitions happen. We were recently successful in our application to the National Lottery Heritage Fund to support our community and outreach resilience project. Now, this project is um, a bit more wide ranging than the World Heritage Site Management Plan, but it is a key element of it. And what it will help us to do is to properly engage a more diverse and representative range of people in the management plan review, like young people, communities who live outside the World Heritage Site, and those from a, from a variety of ethnic backgrounds. We so look forward to working with our project partners to deliver this important work. And of course, what this will result in is a more representative, inclusive and robust management plan. And just to uh, finish off uh, last slide, um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, of course, this is um, our last uh, partnership meeting. And I just wanted to really, with that in mind, I wanted to re-emphasize um, how we are bringing forward the aims of Atlas beyond the official end date of the project. Uh, and of course, we really want to keep those relationships alive uh, with our partners. Uh, we at Edinburgh World Heritage uh, really believe in the aims of the project and its benefits for urban World Heritage sites and the people that live in them. So the process of uh, developing the management plan is of great value in its own right. And of course, uh, we hope that the, it will benefit the city for many, many years. It also has a wider legacy. It's been very useful in um, developing our thinking and helping us to mainstream heritage into decision making, which of course is an ongoing process. Uh, helping us to break barriers between heritage and other subject areas. And in helping us to develop and inform our forward direction as a charity, which just to give you a sense and our partners have seen this, but perhaps some of the guests today haven't. We are looking uh, to take our existing conservation funding program, which is given uh, benefit to the city for many years and accelerating uh, progress in making sure that this is uh, people-centered and supporting uh, recovery. Uh, and moving our um, engagement program to be ever more inclusive and more meaningful for new communities and of course as is the theme for uh, the next two days um, making sure that we are really playing a key role in the heritage sector in Edinburgh in addressing the climate emergency. Right, uh, I will leave the presentation there. Uh, thank you, everyone. I really hope that was of interest to you, giving you a quick reminder of our context, 
how Atlas is feeding into the management plan review and our important um, setting out thinking as to how we're going to take that forward. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Christina. Uh, now we'll continue our World Wind Tour of Europe and we will continue to Florence, please. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carlo Francini, site manager of the historic center of Florence as World Heritage Site. It's a great pleasure to be with you, colleagues and friends of Atlas Project, in particular with friends from Edinburgh, a twin city for more than 50 years with Florence. Today, with Chiara Bocchio, I am going to present Florence and our path towards our management and sustainability plan. The historic center of Florence has been inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1982 under the criteria one, two, three, four, and six. The blue line show the boundaries of the site, which follow the old city walls built at the beginning of the 14th century and almost entirely destroyed in the middle of the 19th century. Here, you can also see the boundaries of the buffer zone, which includes the hills around the city. The buffer zone was approved by the World Heritage Committee in 2014. A management plan has been in place since 2006. It was monitored over the years and radically updated in 2016. We are currently working on the updating of the management plan. And now we are working for the new management and sustainability plan. As in the previous plan, the review is designed on a five-year circle cycle. Sorry. We decided to, decided to focus a particular attention to the governance system, roles and responsibilities for the protection, conservation, and enhancement of the site. There is a, a greater involvement of the steering committee in the plan, especially in the section of strategic project to be included in the action plan. We are in the process of organizing meetings with managers of the project which be included in the action plan. And we have involved citizens and stakeholders through online service service. Moreover, we are applying the new operational methods using Google, for Google Forms to receive project to insert with the action plan. The new plan hopefully will include the proposal of extension of the perimeter of the core zone, which intends to comprise a seminato al monte that you can find in the blue area. As suggested by the UNESCO ECOMOS advisory mission, which took place in Florence in 2017, we will deepen the historical section of the plan and develop maps to, that represent the very stage of Florence urban development. An important aspect which was underlined during the mission is the definition of the attributes of the site, which carry its outstanding universal value behind the specific monuments reference in the description. The plan is taking into account the interaction between the major program, the new city planning policies, and the new project, Rinasce Firenze, which identifies the essential points from which to restart the city life after the lockdown. Regarding the action plan, we identified our objectives and action taking into account the work developed by Porto within Atlas WH project. Further aspect which contribute to the identification of action plan objectives and action are the 2030 agenda, the Helsinki action plan for Europe and the recommendation emerge from the UNESCO ECOMOS advisory mission. So project sheet will try to answer 
to those important aspects. As I mentioned before, during the identification of objectives and actions, we took also into account the new city planning policies, the main objectives present with the major program, the new Rinascia Firenze project and its main points, as well as the new macro areas, which try to replay to the challenges emerge from the last period reporting and those emerged nowadays. And now I will leave the floor to Chiara Bocchio. Chiara. Thank you very much, Carlo, and good morning, everyone. Um, now I'm going to present to you the macro areas uh, of the management plan, its uh, objectives, uh, and few projects that we have identified. Uh, in total, we have uh, six uh, macro areas, governance, international and institutional affairs and participation, heritage, conservation and knowledge, and livability, commerce and residence. So then we have management of the tourist uh, system, environment and climate change, transport system as a last uh, macro area of our management plan. So these are the objective of the first macro area. I'm going just to read a few of them. So to improve the relationship between the different policy uh, strategies and planning tools focused on World Heritage Site and neighboring areas and uh, World Heritage Values, and to strengthen the credibility of Florence within the International World Heritage Network. Here you can see the objective of the second ma uh, macro area, so heritage conservation and knowledge. We will focus uh, on establishing an effective system of monitoring uh, of for monitoring the site and its uh, attributes, which make it possible to identify, to prioritize and coordinate intervention in a programmed uh, manner, and on applying an integrated and shared approach from the early stages uh, of project design, which assesses the direct or consequent impact on cultural heritage, in particular on OUV, so the outstanding universal value of the site. So in this slide, uh, we brought an example of a project that we are in the process to implement in the macro area, heritage conservation and knowledge. That is a Florence heritage data system. The project intends to de uh, define and develop an information uh, infrastructure potentially open to interaction with databases used by various subjects applied to different sectors, which share the goal of monitoring the, site, the city dynamics and enhancing the city cultural heritage. Regarding livability, commerce and residence, we would like to focus more on improving livability by enhancing services for residents revitalizing neighborhood trade and crafts. And an important project which goes towards livability is the project enhancement of smaller city squares and spaces, places they are not valued but have a great potential. The idea of this project is to counteract the deterioration of important urban public spaces with uh, urban gardening, temporary installation, the implementation of a lively area and an agenda of cultural events for the summer season. The macro area uh, related to tourism uh, system, on the other hand, aims to identify new and effective tools for the management, monitoring and forecasting of the carrying capacity of the site, tourist uh, flows, and their environmental, social and physical impact on the site, and also to enhance the lesser known areas inside and outside the historic center, 
and to undertake decentralization strategies for the cultural offer. One of the projects we identified for this macro area is the Greenway Project, a 15 kilometer green itinerary in the Old Trano area. The Greenway project tries uh, to, to unify three separate itineraries passing through gardens that belong to different institutions. And this project wants to raise awareness about this unique itinerary, which enhances the landscape and hillside of the Oltrarno district. Regarding environment and climate change, we aim at ensuring the institutions and citizens are informed and able to apply response procedures uh, during a disaster and increasing the number of green areas within the site accessible to the public. The flood risk management plan is a project that goes towards the di this direction. It aims to build an homogeneous framework for the assessment and management of flood phenomena risks in order to reduce the negative consequences for human health, the environment, cultural heritage, and economic activities. So last but not least, uh, regarding mobility, the World Heritage Site has the objective of strengthening the public transport network through, for example, tramway, protective bus lines, and alternative electric mobility, and easily reaching the um, entire system of the cultural and natural heritage of the area through an effective integrated mobility system. So towards these um, these directions, uh, this project wants to guarantee boosting of the local public transport system, making Florence a more livable, sustainable, and well connected city. And now we address uh, the theme of the active involvement of citizens in the value of uh, the World Heritage Site. So on the 2nd and 4th of March 2021, we organized two meetings to involve part of Florentine citizens who had previously shown a particular attention and sensitivity to heritage, to the heritage of the city. Uh, given the possibility of involving uh, citizens in presence, we, um, we decided to use digital tools uh, to collect uh, feedbacks and valuable information from citizens. The two meetings uh, were held online through Microsoft Teams, while through Slido platform it was possible to carry out an online survey, collecting the answers of the participants. And several questions were raised and the answers were instantly organized into word clouds, graphics, and etc. So we had the chance to immediately comment on the results of the survey. And we, uh, we can say that it was a very engaging method. So as you can see, we had a, a persistent, as a persistent um, answer, um, the most, uh, uh, so, so as you can see, uh, we had a, as a kind of a range uh, um, uh, of age, uh, the majority were uh, people um, from 50, 55 to uh, 64. And uh, uh, the first question was, what's your favorite place in Florence? And as you can see, we had as a persistent uh, answer, the most uh, uh, famous uh, squares uh, of the city, uh, such as Piazza Santa Croce, Piazza della Signoria, and other places such as the green areas, which in addition to having an environmental value, have also a strong social value for, uh, social value for, uh, for citizens. 
So uh, as a second question, uh, we uh, we raised this uh, this question so regarding the characteristic that identify Florence as uh, world heritage. And uh, and as you can see, uh, the 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 reply uh, the the most uh, um, the major reply was uh, artistic heritage. So um, and then we had as a third question, uh, what are the little known places in Florence to safeguard and to enhance? And here, uh, so uh, we have as a as a as a as a reply. Uh, so the minor museums and also the historical gardens. And so, as a major replies to our question, as a first question, uh, we had a, how to contribute to safeguarding and enhancing the city. And so, um, and so here we, we we asked for an opinion on how citizens can actively can actively contribute into the maintenance and decorum of the city. And uh, here we we see how citizens uh, would like to actively contribute to the to the city uh, decorum, for example, uh, through. Um, activity, volunteering activities. So, and now we will leave you with uh, some uh, final uh, words that were pronounced by the, uh, by the citizens. And, uh, um, and so um, this month we, we, we are uh, finalizing, so the, 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 the management plan and uh, these these uh, underlines how how citizens are very active uh, and uh, here there are very beautiful words by by florentine active citizens so the intangible heritage characterized by bottegas artisans and other and works is the most important aspect to safeguard or it is to promote areas there are little nouns such as Costa San Giorgio and other sentences that were pronounced during our meetings. As you can see also here. And now I leave uh, the uh, final words to Carlo that will underline the last and next steps for our management plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chiara. Yeah, the, the, the final, the final uh, slide um, is the, the, our, our next steps. This month, we are finali finalizing the preparatory document for the management and sustainability plan. And uh, uh, we will participate in the community involvement process, Firenze Prossima, initiative by our municipality that has the intention to engage community towards development of the new operational plan and the green areas plan. From the next month, we will organize single meetings with the student committee members and stakeholders to collect further data on strategic project. In autumn, student committee members will validate the final version of the management plan which will, be, which will be approved by the City Council in December 2021. So uh, these were the activities that we have developed in these months. And uh, very thank you for your attention. Thank you, Chiara. And thank you for, to our colleagues from Atlas Project. Thank you both very, very much. That was really, really interesting. Um, now we will swiftly move on to Porto, please. Hello, everyone. I think I don't have the 
camera going on because it's off there, not here. Thank you very much. Well, I'll present portal, uh, the, the elaboration of, of the, the plan is uh, uh, running on. We, we are almost finishing. Could, could you share my presentation or my, my, I? Yes, I can share it for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You, you may go on forward. Uh, well, and, and then forward again. These are some, some pictures. We, we, we are in a city center in, a, in the border of in, in both boards over a river, the river Dole, uh, next to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, go on, please. You may change. Thank you. Uh, we, we are in in a metropolitan area in the north uh, west of Portugal. Um, our uh, historical uh, center uh, coincides most of it with the um, uh, walls of 14th century, and it includes uh, an iron bridge over the river Douro and the monastery in the left bank of the river. You may change the slide, please. Well, we have uh, in in this map at the left uh, side the um, the shape of the historic center, which is inside the walls uh, in beginning of uh, 19th century, and the uh, development of the new town, which you should say so, uh, along the 18th century. That uh, is a is a radial shape, uh, and it is now more or less the uh, buffer zone of the historical center. You may go on, please. There are the limits of the, the in red, the limit of the uh, area included in the heritage site, and the, the blue line is the buffer zone in both um, banks of uh, the, the river door. We, are, uh, we entered the, the, the list in 1996, under the criteria four, and we have about um, 5,000 uh, inhabitants uh, in the, the classified area. We might, we might go ahead. Uh, our vision to the to ne next period, uh, this is uh, more or less uh, next 10 years, is to um, go on with an historical center respecting the outstanding uh, universal value uh, with sustainability uh, uh, being attractive to residents, investors and visitors, encompassing different active and intergenerational communities with a strong national and international recognition. This is our vision for this management plan to achieve. Next one, please. Well, some of these attributes is to, to, to have a rehabilitated historic center. It was very damaged some, some decades ago, respecting the good architecture and urban uh, landscape, safeguarding values and attributes of the monuments, but also the current buildings. We have more or less uh, 2000 buildings inhabited by its own population, including old and new residents with a sustainable and development at local uh, development at the social, economic, and uh, environmental levels, um, balancing all age groups, what, what does, doesn't exist yet, various levels of equipment and facilities in operation, most of them now are running, uh, active and authentic local commerce with tourists and visitors, 
environmentally sustainable uh, in, in concerning mobility means and uh, with uh, non-resident users from all over port and the metropolitan city we may go on thank you uh, then we consider now important the protection of the roof facade well, uh, from um, the classification uh, uh, in the World Heritage List in 1996, we had already a, a management plan in 2008 to 2010. Uh, but uh, now we uh, we see that it's important not only to protect the, the facades and the, the, the buildings themselves, but also the um, the, the roof facade of, of the city as it is a very slopey city and uh, they are visible and they are very interesting as a um, sculpture of urban landscape. We may go on. Uh, concerning property, most of the buildings are private. Uh, there are some big buildings um, all, all owning to the, to the state and some areas um, where municipality bought uh, a large number of, of um, buildings um, and there are also some buildings from church or uh, other type of associations but uh, what we must have present is that most of this uh, heritage is belonging to private owners make a run uh, this is a map of the archaeology done in last uh, years uh, from 2008 and, and um, it's a, a large number uh, as uh, each works uh, either in buildings or in the streets is uh, done with, with the participation of archaeologues and we had uh, 582 uh, excavations um, that permitted in this period to, to find uh, in, in, in important uh, structures of, of the, um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, walls, uh, pre-Roman walls, that means Iron Age, uh, let's say uh, first millennium before Christ, where the, the roots of city are. are. We may go on. Uh, the state of conservation uh, as you see the, the, the green is uh, the good state, uh, but there are uh, yet uh, a large number of uh, bad state buildings. So we have, uh, uh, well, uh, 172 buildings in better condition, 122 in ruins, and uh, we need to uh, go on working. Um, uh, but uh, this was uh, pushed ahead uh, very strongly in the last decade. Make go on. Uh, this uh, this is the the map of the rehabilitation works along the years from 2010 to, to, to 2019. It's the last uh, information I have, um, and and we see that uh, well. Uh, it, it was uh, almost uh, always uh, rising uh, with a peak in, nine, in, in 2016, um, but uh, it, it continues until 2019. Of course, the, the pandemic crisis is eff affecting uh, this process, but we hope that in next years we'll refine re re the, the way to go on uh, working on the rehabilitation of the buildings. The next slide, please. Uh, most of buildings are, have houses or some have uh, commerce and housing or uh, housing and uh, offices. Um, they are, uh, most of them, small buildings. The, the, the biggest buildings are institutions, not, not housing. For, but um, we have also a large number of uh, uh, public housing. We have uh, uh, social housing. Um, more or less uh, 365 uh, families uh, in flats um, for uh, an affordable rents program um, to help in another rehousing program. 
and uh, even today there are news for uh, new houses brought to market for uh, affordable houses. Go on, please. Well, this is a, a map of the the, the city plan, not, not of the historical center. Historical center is located there in in, in a small piece, uh, but it shows the size of the building of the houses in in uh, in Porto, and we may see that uh, in, in the historical center, uh, most of the houses has uh, one room or two rooms. Uh, this this is the result of the, of the parcels that they are uh, small lots in the historical center, um, and also uh, the the phenomenon of uh, uh, the location of the the, the biggest families uh, that prefer uh, uh, not the historical center but the peripheral areas of of Porto. We may go on. Um, green areas uh, are, are not um, much uh, available to develop, but uh, we, we have a program to uh, reinforce the, 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 the street um, the street trees and also some uh, private areas to um, uh, create new, new gardens, uh, not, not big gardens because the, the, the density of buildings in historical center is very, very, very high. Uh, we have, um, although, uh, some important uh, and interesting parks uh, in the buffer zone, uh, and, and this must be kept and developed. Let's go ahead. Well, this is social vulnerability. We have, uh, for instance, in, in, in a map in the right side, the, the, the red areas um, the, the areas where the scholarity is um, less developed in port and historical center is one of those um, areas. Uh, what uh, uh, concerns us with uh, uh, the necessity of uh, paying attention to, to the qualification of, of the population in, in, in these areas, namely in the historical center. We may go on. Uh, also, mobility, and we need to uh, increase uh, public transport. Um, there, there are in project new metro lines. Uh, we need to um, increase soft modes uh, to, to uh, increase the proximity of um, uh, the, the neighborhoods to the, the points of uh, um, in interchange of transport. Um, and that means uh, to um, create uh, uh, the facility to the, to the, to the inhabitants to, to use the pedestrian ways to, to arrive to the, to the, the, the public transportation, uh, which faces the problem of our uh, topography, which is not uh, easy. Next slide, please. Concerning environment and climate and risks, um, we 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 have some risks uh, in the future, maybe in this decade, of uh, arriving to to extreme heat in summer, uh, and also to um, extreme cold in winter. Um, we, we must um, pay attention to, to this uh, phenomenon uh, that might bring um, uh, extreme uh, temperatures uh, and, and, and maybe um, uh, difficult to, to, to keep uh, health in the population of, of the historical center. You may go ahead. Concerning the the noise, we, we don't have a special problems in, inside the historical center um, concerning in comparison with other areas of the, the city, but we must pay attention to traffic and other problems uh, located in, in very uh, specific places. I go. Concerning the, the the safeguard and the value of the universal uh, value, uh, 
we we'll, we'll may go ahead. Our our mission is aligned in in four um, lines or axes. One is heritage. The other is population, housing, and communities. The third is economy, and the fourth is environment and mobility. Our plan uh, is is uh, um, spreading a uh, uh, large number of actions along these uh, four axes. Um, concerning heritage, we have tangible and intangible heritage in the historical center. Concerning population and communities, we have uh, residents, but we have the need to reinforce uh, the cohesion and to attract the new residents. Uh, because uh, because uh, the residents are being lost in the historical center from decades ago. Uh, concerning economy um, and with, with a special gravity after after the pandemic crisis, we must uh, promote diversity and uh, also uh, new uh, activities, uh, mainly uh, creative and innovation activities. Uh, concerning mobility, uh, we we must uh, improve pedestrian ways of uh, access to the public transportation and um, uh, reduce uh, carbon emissions of course let's go ahead for all actions um, in a, in a are conceived in, a, in, a, in, a, in the midst of the sanitary and the socioeconomic crisis. Uh, this, this is a year completely different from the decade before. Uh, we, we, we need to transform Porto and conceive it as a a number of uh, agents of change and uh, culture uh, to 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 get this mission achieved and, and we can see uh, the planning process of this plan on, uh, implemented in uh, inserted in a management body able of transposing the implementation and monitoring and conducting the actions in the field Let's say we uh, after after the the plan being uh, done and approved, we must bring it to the field and 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 uh, operate it, uh, and this is uh, essential. We make a harm. So uh, as a, a management of the historical center of Porto implies the search for a balance on the tensions uh, that exist and will continue between the place and its experience. The harmonization between what was planned, what is planned, and the, the socioeconomic and political transformations that continues a challenge uh, that, that, that demands the safeguarding of the historical center as an heritage site, an inhabited site and inclusive space attractive and competitive, sustainable and outstanding universal value. Uh, we need policy integration and agile management, uh, firm safeguards and innovation. Go on, please. Well, um, the, the main uh, difficulty uh, in this moment, and maybe in the future, we must uh, solve that uh, is the, the articulation, because there are a large number of um, departments and uh, services and uh, uh, decision centers. Uh, we, we are in two municipalities. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, um, municipal companies working. Uh, we have the, the city council, the local and uh, regional and central services of uh, culture, for instance. We have the community and the private agents. Uh, the management plan must uh, uh, build the agreement of uh, consensus among these uh, 
uh, different uh, partners. You may go on. So this, this management model uh, needs integration of policies, uh, municipal, local, inter-municipal and national. Uh, monitoring system and evaluation. It exists, but it must be uh, always de developed um, to um, uh, allow the, the, the report of, of the, the evolution uh, and, and the evaluation of the implementation of the policies that are defined in the plan and um, a plan of communication to, to to spread the, the information about the, the historical center. Go ahead, please. Well, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you the, the invitation to be here. And it's a, a pleasure to, to change experience with uh, these uh, uh, historical centers that have um, many things in common as uh, world heritage and many things different as uh, each town is different from another. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rui. Some incredible images in your presentation. Thank you. Um, now, last but not least, we'll go to Santiago de Compostela. I will just stop sharing. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Maybe I need, uh, Gabby, that you disactivate or activate uh, the image. Okay. Mm, okay. Now I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So let me introduce myself. Um, my name is uh, Daniel Gonzalez. I'm a member of a team. Uh, that he is working <clears throat> on the management plan of Santiago de Compostela, and I will try to show you briefly the, the state of what we are doing regarding this. <clears throat> so, as you may know, Santiago de Compostela uh, emerges as a global reference for pilgrimage, and uh, in that sense, as in the 10th century, this city has been able to crystallize on build capital, a singular way of understanding the religious fact. This is <clears throat> what we could consider the tangible heritage, but underlying that, uh, its operation and functionality lied until very recent times in traditional resource management models, what we could talk about intangible heritage that includes water cycle, energy production from local resources, circular waste management, and use of fertile soil for food production. <clears throat> All this is uh, what is included in the outstanding universal value of Santiago de, de Compostela. And they all have crystallized in several different forms of capital. We have the natural capital, uh, which is the source of livelihood for the residents and pilgrims, both of them. The build capital as a main expression of the tangible heritage, as I told you before. The very important image capital, which is a pillar of a global reference for pilgrimage. And human and social capital, which is the basis of the historical and social construction of Santiago. <clears throat> The successful conservation management that began in the 80s of the last century focused uh, on build and image capital mainly, but it did not the same with natural capital and social capital. So um, in terms of natural capital, it's clear there is a clear field of improvement in terms of, of uh, sustainability. And <clears throat> in social capital, uh, we need to focus uh, uh, in the ability to avoid population loss and life loss within the historic center, which is one of the main problems of the city right now. <clears throat> These both are exactly the main subjects that Atlas Project has identified that planification and intervention has to focus in. 
the necessity to enlarge the outstanding universal value to sustainability and social issues. And this means that conservation approach must be based on values. And as, as it is said, values are attributed to the assets by all the interested parties, by the stakeholders, not only by the experts. And that's why we have <clears throat> created uh, and developed an intense agenda of public participation in which uh, we have put on practice the methodology and the values of the ATLAS project <clears throat> and which results we want to show you briefly. So first of all, how to connect tangible world heritage with sustainability. Uh, the local ambition of this uh, challenge is clear main strategy must be to integrate the territorial relationships as part of the conservation assets we want to preserve, recovering those uh, sustainable principles of traditional management <clears throat> system of water, energy, waste and fertility, but of course applying modern technology on all of them. <clears throat> we have found a very simple way to say it, which is as much local supply as possible, as much external resources as necessary, but only the necessary. <clears throat> so for this, we need to create a new logistics scheme, which is able to cope with the last mile distribution of both hotels, restaurants, and so on, all that concentration in the historic center, but also local food products. And for that, we know we need an adaptive management system of urban cargo delivery based on real-time information. And this is something that is that we are working uh, already. There is a, <clears throat> we need to promote uh, mobility transformation and we need uh, the adaptive management system in order to use it as a tool to promote that mobility transformation, looking for a wide, a stakeholders' involvement in order to make resi residents' accessibility compatible with the performance of central functions and tourist activities, which, uh, as, as we all know, makes sometimes problematic uh, the service and, and, and the compatibilization with the normal life of, of resident people in the city. <clears throat> All those strategies, as well as the rest that conform the management plan, um, place the guiding principles and establish uh, a strategic mainframe for the whole planification system of the city, which includes urbanism, mobility parks, local commerce, employment, and of course, housing. We need to develop the potential for residential reception of the historic city. This is probably one of the main challenges of our situation right now. We need to recover its own on a specific commercial and cultural activities. And we need to recover life and people within the historic center. We need for that uh, uh, to, uh, uh, we need the re revitalization program for the historic city in order to improve quality of life, attract new inhabitants, and promote tourists and residents' relations. And this is one of the main topics that I want to focus in. Of course, it is clear we need to reorientate the tourism model. We need to base residents' tourists' relations on world heritage interpretation and experience. This is not only about stone and wood. This is about people and about how and especially why people build it. And this is the basis of what we can offer uh, for a new model of, of tourism. But this cannot come alone. We need also to transform the economic basis of the city, placing information and knowledge flows in first place. And for that, we have two really important assets, which is first, uh, the um, uh, university capabilities, and the second, the Santiago's worldwide projection to attract talent. Those must be the fundamentals that allow us to boost 
creative and innovative economic activities. And these three initiatives can be also concentrated in a very simple way to say it, which is conservation as a rule, innovation as a guide. And this is what underlies the main economic strategy uh, which has been lo launched by this uh, management plan, which consists in transforming Santiago in an innovation and knowledge hub and looking for a way to support a stable institutional relationship a space between public and private stakeholders of the city knowledge milieu. This is what we have called uh, Santiago de Compostela Innovation Urban System. And this is what I'm trying to explain briefly in the next uh, slide. Um, those are the core parts of this innovation uh, urban system. The university capabilities, the innovation institutes, the research centers, all of them, they are present and, and with a long history in, in the city. Of course, other actors like cities, influential gastronomic pole, all of this is the core of it, the, ing the main ingredients. But uh, there is another important uh, uh, things that are going to improve the, um, the, 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 the first part, the core of, of, the, of the innovation urban system, which is the Santiago's powerful brand, the strengthening of the IT connections and a governance commitment with the city's knowledge and political stakeholders. All this together is what conform this innovation knowledge hub, but what makes it unique in the world is its relationship with the historic city. And of course, the opportunity to rearrange underused patrimonial buildings as facilities for this hub. So all this together is what we call the Universidad, which is a place in which innovation, research, and conservation goes hand by hand within a world heritage and vibrant urban context. And this is developed in a city uh, in which uh, uh, the city itself is decarbonized. The city has been recoupled, or the, the, the strategy is to recouple it with its territory, to have a balanced relation between tourism and residency, and a city focused in breathing new life to big and all urban containers, which are conservational assets. So just to finish uh, with a little bit more poetic way of integrate uh, the content and the meaning that I tried to show you. This is about four elements. First of all is a stone as a canonical representation of a public space. The second is the wood, the expression of the comfortability and worm of private space. Third is water, as the flow of a local identity. And the fifth is nature, as the raison d'etre of the living heritage of the city. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Huge thanks, Daniel. Um, and also thank you so much to all of our partner representatives for sharing their work on sustainability plans. And um, we'll be exploring the themes that we've touched on in more detail um, this afternoon and tomorrow. Um, so this afternoon we have uh, our event, World Heritage and the Climate Emergency, Assessing the Threat. And then tomorrow we'll be continuing the conversation with creating solutions. So I know a lot of people are signed up for, for all of these events, so it'll be great to see you there. Um, if not, uh, please ask us for some more information and we look forward to welcoming you. Thank you very much, everybody.